so uh, we just stopped by to see Ajahn Yi Bangkating, who is the Ajahn who does all my sakyan. Um, I've been uh, learning from him in this path of sakyan as these like meditative, I don't know, dimensions, dimensions or <laughs> machines um, for five years, I think. Um, at least. At least. So my first sakyan from him was my right elbow is this one um, that I got about five years ago and I just uh, two fights ago won my first fight by um, a cut from my elbow it was kind of interesting I was telling Kevin just now that um, the experience of getting my first elbow tattoo and just now getting my other elbow tattoo this one they are not the same um, was that when I first went to him it was this like uh wanting to strengthen a weapon that I didn't really understand and that I was pretty vulnerable to that at the time I got it I wasn't even getting elbowed very much I it like became know. something I was vulnerable to because I'm white cow um, but to have kind of spent five years earning that sakyant uh, and to then on top of that make the next transformation um, by getting the other side done. When I went to him uh, today, I explained to him that um, I now understand that weapon and have really connected more to the power of that yacht. Um, and so I wanted him to um, help build the body of the warrior on the other side. And he totally understood um, and looked through his book for quite a while trying to find the right one um, that he wanted to put and to find the right uh, incantation. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, probably. Like the, the letters that go around it. Um, but uh, it was cool. It was very cool when he like had found what he wanted to put on there and he was um, getting ready to actually start drawing and inking um, on my left elbow. He, uh, he started reading the other yacht that he's given me. So he read my elbow and he read my hands, which are done um, to see how to like build on that magic because you don't make it redundant like um, I already have the magic on the on the right elbow so you wouldn't do the same thing um, and it was this incredible thing of like being read <laughs> like he was reading which was very cool makes you like a book makes me like a book one of the first things Kevin said to me when um, we met is that he couldn't read me <laughs> 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 which I liked because yeah. I'm not a fucking book <laughs> 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 But when you're reading something you wrote on someone, that's very cool. He's the one who wrote them on me, so um, that was cool. Um, is the incredible thing to me about when you get sakyan is they're really painful, um, but that pain is part of the lesson. Like that pain is teaching, um, and I was kind of laughing to myself a little bit while I was um, enduring this this one just now, which is that. Um, there's this, the only certainty is that it's going to hurt. Like people want a tattoo, but they're afraid of the pain. They want to fight, but they're afraid of the pain. The pain comes first. The pain is guaranteed. Um, and then whatever you endure or accomplish or learn about yourself or get out of it is on the other side. It's not like maybe I can prepare myself in such a way that it won't hurt. You can only prepare yourself for the fact that it will hurt. Um, and even then, you're not, you're not being courageous until it's already hurt. Like, you're not like, oh, I know it's going to hurt and I'm going to do it anyway. That's courage. Bullshit. When it hurts and you keep doing it, that's courage. It's not knowing that it's going to. It's actually enduring it. It's that experiential knowledge. Um, and it's very much that way in fighting as well. And, and one of the reasons that... Um, I've decided to have my other elbow done as kind of a okay time to transform again from having my first elbow done is um, I think that one of the reasons elbows have been such a kind of sore spot for me um, is that I'm kind of afraid of hurting people um, and that is pain like being afraid of hurting someone is a kind of pain 
And so you have to face it. Like, you have to experience it. Um, and be okay with it and endure it and understand where that's coming from. Um, and I think that I've been... I've written about this many times in different degrees, but you're doing your training partners and your opponents a disservice if you don't push them hard. Um, this whole, like, I'm going to go light because my sparring partner's a girl or something. It's like you're doing a disservice to that person. You're not letting them grow. If you want someone to expand, they have to be right at the end of their limit to expand. You don't expand from five feet inside your adaptable space. Um, and I think that being willing to put that on my opponents is a kind of generosity that I've been very stingy with. I think that huh. not wanting to hurt people is very selfish because I'm very willing to be hurt. Um, so for that to be one-sided in, ex in an exchange that I see as very transformative, not everyone sees it that way. I know the girls I fight don't want to get cut. I'm not saying like I'm doing them a favor by cutting them or whatever, but um, the capacity that these women I fight have where it's like this is just a sport and we're going to dance around like a game and have like a who can get through this fight with the least effort kind of fight, those don't change you as a person. And I don't think that these girls necessarily like get into Muay Thai to have like self-exploration, but that doesn't mean that they're immune from it. It doesn't mean that they can't have it in those fights. Um, and I know I'm a nightmare to fight. <laughs> so um, making that fact as beneficial as possible for both of us, um, I think is to me incredibly important and valuable for what kind of person I wanna be. Um, so, yeah, so now I have, <laughs> I have both my elbows done, um, and, uh, it's interesting to feel the difference in how I went into it, the experience I have of having gotten Sakyan quite a few times now, so knowing what to expect and how it goes and things like that is very different from the first to the, oh no eighth, tenth, something like that. I don't know how many I have now. Um, but it's, it's one of these things that I come across in Muay Thai all the time, which is like, you think that you're always going to have a new lesson, but you end up having the same lesson over and over again because you haven't learned it yet. So like when I was getting my back done and I really, really understood that pain was an important part of this transformation, um, you don't get to have a like brand new realization when you do it again, you get to be told or understand like, oh right, <laughs> pain is really part of that transformation. That was um, something that I noticed when I did my Vipassana three-day meditation retreats is the first time I was like having all of these epiphanies and I was like, oh my God, I'm realizing such profound things. And the second time you don't get that, you learn the same things and like really, really understand them better. Um, and I think that's true about Muay Thai. You always want to have this like huge breakthrough, but really it's a breakthrough of depth of understanding and really accepting something rather than like everything brand new all the time. It's beautiful. And I love that. So, um, that's my vlog update. That's Jai D. And, uh, <laughs> I also had my Mon Khan blessed again by uh, Ajarn P, which makes me very happy. And, um, I'll be seeing him again next month for the Y crew ceremony he has every year. So, um, respect your teachers, learn from your teachers. That's what they're there for. Uh, if you don't know, find someone who does and they'll guide you. So that's Sylvie out.